Hi, everyone. Welcome to Duo 4 Hub Livestream. Uh, today's guest is going to be John D'Souza, and uh, we'll be talking to him about a variety of subjects. But uh, before we begin, I wanted to make sure that uh, some of you that want to later on during Q&A ask a question of uh, John themselves, please make sure to log in to the Telegram group. Uh, you can see the link in the description below. You can download it on your phone or the computer and um, uh, join the group. You'll see the voice chat going on there right now. And you can <clears throat> use Telegram to listen. Or you can uh, use YouTube, uh, Facebook, or Twitch to, to watch the show in general. Uh, there's going to be a slight delay between what you see on, on video and or if you're just using the voice uh, through Telegram. But uh, just know that Telegram is where I will be accepting questions. Uh, of course, if you are too shy to speak directly or don't want to take this opportunity, you can always put a comment or question, uh, I should say, in, in your um, chat in general. Uh, please... Uh, put the three little stars before your question, so that way I know it's for, uh, meant for the guest or for myself, and it's not just um, uh, the ch general chatter that we have in chat. So, okay, that covers my general things that I wanted to do here. Let me just switch my things around. There we go. Hi, John. How are you? Welcome. I am great, Adnan. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here with you on UFO Hub. This is uh, pretty exciting for me. Good stuff. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for being on. I've, I've been um, uh, just recently, I've, I've over the, I think it's been at least two years ago that I've heard of you. Um, I apologize. I hadn't really had a chance up until recently to look more into what it is uh, that you do and who you are. But uh, then, of course, like with everything else in life, it just finally hit me. I was like, I haven't extended an invitation to John, so why don't I do that? And so I'm, I'm very happy that you were able to graciously accept and do this today. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. I'm really uh, very, uh, in very excited to be here to get to some of this uh, material. That is so very important right now, especially in the time that we're living in. And uh, I know that uh, you're aware of this. And so we need to talk to your audience about it as well and let them know what's really going on. Well, certainly, certainly would love to get into all of that and more. So I figured, like like always, if uh, you could please start out with a little bit of background information and then I figured we'll start there. Yes, uh, I'm uh, John D'Souza, special agent, retired of the FBI. Uh, I am so sometimes also called the X-Man uh, because uh, several of my cases were used uh, for inspiration uh, and for an old show called The X-Files, uh, where uh, that happened a very long time ago and uh, very interesting material. Uh, and so I, uh, I call a lot of my... A lot of my stories and my stuff that I distribute to people these days, I call them the real life X-Files. Uh, and I let them know what those stories are. Uh, and uh, that's part of what my, my book that you've cited here, The Extra Dimensionals, is all about as well. It's about the reality and the truth behind alien visitors and UFOs, which is something that uh, people may not know that this is extremely relevant to the time that we're living through right now and uh that's why um that's uh why i talk about this stuff all the time and so i've been doing this for several years uh after i retired from the fbi after i left the fbi and uh now i've been just uh doing other investigations into paranormal matters paranormal matters and uh things that uh, are not um commonly known in the uh in the normie atmosphere, basically. And so, uh, John, what what made you uh, basically want to go to the extent that you have? Because I believe you have three books, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. And, and so, was there some kind of a deal, or was there w would have been any kind of restrictions to start talking about this while you were still um, active, or did you have to wait for retirement to to get started? Well, you yeah, you do have to wait for retirement to really uh, get started with uh, distributing this information. And uh, I retired from the FBI in 
2000, uh, 2013, in 2013, as soon as they, uh, as soon as they uh, got another a guy in charge of the FBI uh, named James Comey, who came in to uh, take over the FBI, and uh, that's when I, that's when I left. I left the very same moment that he came in and took over. And uh, after that, I um, was able to write my books, um, distribute my books, and the FBI just has to, they have to do reviews of my books uh, to make sure I'm not giving up any top secret information. And that's very easy to avoid because, because, and this is an open secret, all of the information that I go through and that I show to people is basically in the public sphere already. It's all out there. Uh, it's just that people have a hard time finding it and being exposed to it. Uh, and uh, you know, I can tell you right off the bat, uh, a lot of the information that I talk about are, is also exposed on the uh, declassified files of the FBI at a place uh, that I'm sure you know about, Adnan, called uh, vault.fbi.gov, where Mm -hmm. All the declassified files are released onto the net. Uh, and um, the CIA does a similar thing at a place called the CIA sitting room on the net where they show all their declassified files. And the stuff that is revealed, is it's unbelievable. Uh, for instance, on uh, the FBI, at the FBI, vault.fbi.gov, they actually have categories. And some of the categories are... Uh, are UFOs, uh, cat, uh, animal mutilations, um, and you know the uh, uh, JFK assassination. So you've got all you've got uh, thousands and thousands of files dumped onto the net uh, in the public, you know, in the public cybersphere for everyone to see and read. But if people don't have someone like me to interpret those files for them, it's a little difficult. It's a little difficult for them to understand what they're looking at. So that's why, that's part of the reason I wrote the Extra Dimensionals, where I expose some of those documents, uh, including the first document that um, the FBI ever revealed to me, showing me that alien visitors and UFOs are real, but they are not physical. And that is revealed at a document uh, in FBI files called The Smoking Gun. The Smoking Gun, which is a document written by the, uh, and I show that document in my book, The Extra Dimensionals. Uh, and anyone can actually go and download it for free. It's very, it's a very simple process. And they can, and it actually is a document from an FBI agent who had an informant that he described as supernormal an old timey word for supernatural. In other words, his informant was an alien visitor. So he said his alien visitor informant told him several, like eight conclusions about, uh, about alien visitors and UFOs. And those eight conclusions, among those eight conclusions are that uh, they are here for peaceful purposes. They are not coming from outer space. They're not coming from our outer space at all. They're coming from other dimensions, other levels of existence called Vedas in the old, uh, in the old language. Uh, Vedas, other levels of reality. That, and the same is true for UFOs. And they, this document was from July 1947. Uh, July 1947, I believe. Uh, and right around the same time that the Roswell PSYOP went forward. So there's a lot involved there. But this document has been the most ignored document in ufology. And uh, I'm sure, Adnan, because of your work, you're, you're familiar with the document as well. Uh, but, um, but most people aren't. And most people aren't, uh, aren't aware that this document told us all that UFOs and alien visitors are not physical in the sense that we are. And that leads to a lot of other investigations that corroborate 
that information as well. And that actually leads into an alarm that I am trying to sound for people today uh, to eliminate the deceit, the deception, and how they are being fooled in this area of ufology today and how that is going to be leading to much worse things. And so that's what I that's what I discuss always with people, and that's what I try to raise the alarm on all the time. So, John, uh, maybe maybe I misheard you. So you're saying that there was an FBI agent that had an informant that was an alien giving him information. That's what I believe, based on his description of his informant in the document. Okay. Um. I'm, yeah, that's it because he described his informant as being super normal and being a, a type of a type of creature that uh, would make other scientists not believe his information. So for me, when I saw that, it just made me believe that his his informant was actually an alien visitor himself. And so knowing that, and especially that it's, you know, this extra dimensional and that they're coming from these different dimensions from a, I guess, nuts and bolts, uh, you know, let's say an average, if there's such a thing, FBI agent, how would they go about, let's say, to, to um, investigate something? Do, well, can you maybe speak a little bit to that? Sure. And I can tell you um, the way that we go about to investigate is that then we, when we have an, a UFO case, we will actually look at it with a different lens that is far more open than the lens that the average investigator would look at it with. For instance, we have the incident that occurred, oh shoot, uh, the, the incident that occurred, I think it was like 1942, in the middle of World War II, uh, the, what we call the Battle of Los Angeles, oh, right. for instance, where we had the entire California coast was all hinked up and was uh, all uh, all very uh, alarmed because they believed that Japanese zeros were going to be coming in to the Cal to Los Angeles at any moment. So the entire California coast was militarized, and Los Angeles was militarized with anti-aircraft munitions and and all kinds of stuff set up to uh, be on the lookout. And of course, what we had instead instead of Japanese zeros, what they had one night coming in was. Uh, was a couple of large UFOs that came in right over Los Angeles. So what did they do? Uh, the investigation shows, uh, after, the, well, after the fact, investigation shows that they actually had the uh, batteries throw up all the munitions. In other words, anti-aircraft fire shot at these UFOs. And they, and they shot everything up at these UFOs. And the UFOs didn't move. Uh, they just stayed there. And so we had all these munitions go up. And the newspapers put out, you know, some news. Oh, yeah, the targets were destroyed. Oh, yeah, this was successful. We, whatever they were, they were destroyed and everything. But that those munitions take pictures. They take pictures of what's going on. And so investigation after the fact shows that there were pictures that actually showed all this munitions going up there and crashing into each other and creating huge explosions in the air, in the air. And also many of the munitions we can see went right through the UFOs. They went right through the UFOs and landed on the ground and killed about five people on the ground in Los Angeles were killed by these munitions that just passed through and went down and kill people on the ground. Now that part was not reported almost anywhere, but it's actually it actually can be looked up, can be shown in investigation after the fact. And so and then the photographs, which were constant clicking photographs that went off during every moment of this incident and afterwards, showed two UFOs unmarked, un, unmolested, that simply just sailed away slowly after all the munitions went off and crashed into each other and did everything else. They, they left. They were fine. And now that is just one incident, one of the investigations that actually uh, fits in 
perfectly with this hypothesis that UFOs and alien visitors are not physical, at least not fully physical in the sense that we are. And so that's just one incident that shows with the complete investigation after the fact um, shows that these, these UFOs were not solid, at least not fully solid in the sense that we understand solidity, you know, and um, that goes together with many other incidences that have occurred also that show that these UFOs um, have not, uh, have not been, have not been uh, solid, have not been physical in the sense, the same way that we were told in this communication that I'm referring to, that told us these UFOs, they're not physical. They're just not. And so, you know, and you can look at so many other investigations. I did an investigation after the fact, uh, a revisiting of Travis Walton's, uh, in, in Travis Walton's uh, incident in 1975 in Sitgraves, Arizona, in Sitgraves, Arizona, where he, uh, he was abducted while he was on the logging crew. And this was with, um, with, uh, with Travis's help as well, because Travis has changed what he believes happened uh, during this, this incident. And where he was actually, there was a UFO that came down and it was not, again, it was filled with light and plasma. It was not just, not just a metallic uh, shell. Uh, there's a, there's a rule that we use generally in investigating these UFOs and it's called the not just metal rule. Uh, we can't, UFOs cannot be just a metal object and, and be expected to be believed to be authentic. There has to be something else. Uh, the UFOs that are believed to be authentic uh, are generally, they're in a shifting state of matter. They're filled with plasma, they're filled with light, and it seems to be like a shifting state of matter. Well, that was the case with the uh, Travis Walton UFO as well. It was filled with light. It was about 60 feet in diameter. And then Travis was taken aboard that ship. Uh, he was taken aboard that ship. <laughs> and then he, uh, he went through a process where he broke free from a bunch of greys that were trying to hold him down. They were trying to hold him down. And then he started walking through the through the UFO, I mean, supposedly through the UFO. And he was walking from chambers that were the size of a football stadium into other stadiums that were even larger. In other words, the UFO wasn't just a 60 foot diameter craft. It was something else. There was like 5D space involved with it. So that it reinforced, again, the same hypothesis these UFOs are not just physical in the sense, in the 3D sense that we are, that we are physical as well. See, so that was another incident that I, I go through very carefully in the extra dimensionals to show people how that, uh, that fits in with that hypothesis that these UFOs are not physical in the sense that we understand physicality. And so, um, so there's many, many investigations like that that reinforce the same the same hypothesis, and they also uh, go into the hypothesis of the alien visitors themselves not being physical in the sense that we are. And so, I do a lot of those. I show a lot of those investigations as well, uh, so that people can understand this. And by the way, this is not this hypothesis is not um, is not something new it is something that was uh, made very um it was made very well known uh, the extra dimensional hypothesis or the intradimensional hypothesis by uh jacques valet uh john keel in the 70s I, I believe it was the 70s 1970s uh and many other great thinkers uh in ufology also um uh, talked about this uh but the earliest that i have seen it is from this document in 1947, July of 1947, in FBI files, 
that uh, the smoking gun that I'm talking about right now. So, uh, you went into a good deal about um, the the crafts themselves. So, what kind of um, analysis were you able to draw of basically about the beings themselves? About the beings themselves, what I have what I have seen from place to place to place is that it appears that the beings, when they appear to people, very often during, let's say, abductions, very often during abductions, they appear to have a, a, a non-physical, ethereal quality to them. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say like the Betty and Barney, uh, Betty and Barney uh, uh, abduction, uh, which occurred, uh, when they uh, were um, taken, they described the abduction experience and a lot of abductees that I describe as well. Uh, there's a there's a quality to the abduction that appears to be dreamlike, dreamlike, ethereal, non-physical. It's almost like they are being converted into another reality. Uh, rather than uh, being taken in a physical way, uh, in a totally physical experience. So, and that has been consistent from every single abduction experience that I have that I have investigated, in, including my own uh, investigation, my own uh, attempted abduction when I was a child, an experience that I talk about also in my book, The Extra Dimensionals. Uh, I had a when I was about uh, 10 years old, I had an experience where I was at home. It was about, it was about, uh, it was about uh, two in the morning, something like that. No, I think it was about three in the morning. And I was trying to stay awake, little game that little boys play, uh, see how long I could stay awake. And then uh, the room changed temperature. Uh, the room changed temperature. And these uh, creatures that I had been seeing from time to time sporadically uh, over the previous month or so uh, in other experiences, they came into my room. I assumed they were little children because they appeared to be about the size of small children, almost smaller than me at the time. And they, but like the room changed, I stiffened up like a board and they were able to take my feet and take my head and lift me up. It was like I was a, like a helium balloon half filled and they just lifted me up and I would stay wherever they lifted me to. And then they started climbing on nothing and they started taking me up and I saw the ceiling coming closer and closer to me of my bedroom and they started to pass through the ceiling. And they tried to bring me with them. And for some reason, my forehead just clunked on the ceiling. And they seemed very perplexed by this. They seemed very confused. And they lowered me again. And then they brought me back, tried to get me through the ceiling. And again, I was bumping against the ceiling. Uh, and I believe they were trying to convert me into this non-physical state that they were in, in order to pass through my ceiling and take me with them. And as they kept bumping my forehead against the ceiling, uh, I started to be able to move a little bit. I started to kind of come out of the stupor that I was in. And I was able to turn my neck a little bit and I turned my neck and I could see into my parents' bedroom where two of these same creatures were standing over my parents' bed with their arms out like this. And they appeared to somehow be keeping my, my mother and father asleep, even though I saw my father struggling side to side, side to side, and he was sweating as well. And I just looked down there, and one of the, the creature that was nearest to me, and they had those big black slit eyes, 
and he just looked up to where I was and I heard him say, well, I sort of heard him say in my head, I heard him say, he's awake. And then at that moment, I just, every, the cord was cut. I fell down all the way down into my bed like a sack of potatoes and they were gone. And the room's temperature was normal again. And they were just, that was, that was it. They were gone. They were disappeared. I couldn't believe it. I was working up my, my courage to uh, wake up my parents. I, I was so excited. And then I just, I just went to sleep. I just fell out and uh, I went to sleep and uh, didn't wake up for like eight hours after that. And that was my experience of that sort of attempted abduction that occurred to me. And I also experienced that they had that non-physical quality to them as well. That's interesting that especially, I guess having an experience like that really comes in handy because then you always have, um, I was, you know, like with everything, the physical experience really ingrains more of an understanding. So if you're going to be investigating, if you're going to be moving forward, um, um, I think it's it's a good tool to have, you know, instead of uh, coming from kind of a imaginary approach, like trying to put yourself in someone else's shoes, you were actually in those shoes. So I guess that makes it very convenient in that way. But um, yeah. so... What else do you generally, would you then, was there, was there some kind of, uh, besides then, uh, we're peaceful, we're, we're here for peaceful purposes, was, was there, was there more to it, or was that just it, that basically they're traveling, um, this interdimensionally contacting different human beings uh, for, what, their own different agendas, or was there more that they were trying to convey to us? Well, if we go back to that uh, communication again, uh, and I, that uh, communication, the uh, smoking gun communication, and uh, I have it, I have it, for instance, right here. Ah, there it is. Uh, it is just a one-page document. Uh, it appears, and again, anyone can download it. It's titled A Memorandum of Importance. And uh, many, many people in your audience, Adnan, are familiar with it already. Mm -hmm. and uh, but they may not be familiar with uh, my interpretation of it since I am familiar with FBI terms and uh, things of that sort uh, and the other things that it says is that they are here for peaceful peaceful purposes and but that we should never engage uh, with our never engage them with our military or else we'll have very bad results, bad consequences. And uh, just a few years, and this document is July 8th, 1947. Just a couple of years after this document, we saw what happened in 1952 over Washington, D.C., which was the one and only time that we sent an entire Air Force out after UFOs. And it was a catastrophe for our Air Force. Uh, the uh, UFOs uh, that were over the Capitol for 14 days straight. For 14 days, they uh, did whatever they wanted with our jet planes, uh, with our USA Air Force uh, planes. They did over-unders. They did uh, uh, forward and reverses. They did. Um, they made it. They did loop-de-loops around our air, around our jet planes, our military jets, and they 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 did this for two weeks over uh, the airspace in uh, Washington, D.C. It was incredibly embarrassing to our, our Air Force, and it was the last time in the Western world that an entire Air Force was sent out after, after um, UFOs. Uh, that never has happened ever again, and, uh, and it's because of that. Uh, so some of the things that have been said in this document that I'm talking about um, have come to fruition a short time afterwards. But the other thing that it uh, said uh, in this document is that uh, they are, that these uh, UFOs have no one inside of them. They have no one inside of them. 
in the, in the Bible, it says that the wheels that accompany uh, that accompany these creatures in the book of Ezekiel, you probably know, uh, it says that uh, the wheels have spirits within them uh, that move them, uh, and that and yet there are spirits that move with the wheels outside of the wheels, and that they move together. It's uh, you know, and again, we can pretend to, that we know what it means, but what I do think that that means is that uh, these these UFOs, the authentic, real UFOs, are themselves alive. They have a sort of consciousness, and they accompany alien visitors as well. They do not contain alien visitors like us because they're not like us. Where they don't have to lock themselves in tin cans and uh, sail across the universe like we would, because they're not like us. It's a very different type of experience. Um, so yeah, I do believe that alien visitors are real. I believe that UFOs, authentic UFOs, non-terrestrial UFOs, are real also. But I believe they are very, very different from what we have been led to believe by Hollywood. Uh, by uh, by uh, celebrity ufologists, uh, by uh, many people who are invested in making us believe that UFOs and alien visitors are physical, just like us. They're physical, just like us. As a matter of fact, that's what Roswell, the entire Roswell uh, incident, was designed to make us believe, to make us create. They uh, Roswell was actually designed to make us believe the opposite. Uh, that uh, alien visitors are physical, just like us. They can, they're in these tin cans, and they can just crash and end up as dead bodies by the side of the road, just like us, because they're just like us, physical, just like us, and they're not. That's why I believe that uh, the Roswell incident was a giant uh, psyop that was set up in order to make us to take over that uh, that agenda and to make us believe that UFOs. And the alien visitors are physical, which I believe is not true at all. So then, would would um, were you able to then find anything regarding if there's only one uh, type of being um, visiting, or if there's several, and uh, whether or not that that you know the old conspiracy theory, uh, you know, well, I, I believe it to be a bit different, but you know, for for I guess just for this purpose of this conversation. Would, would you know that some of them have been interacting with uh, some of the government officials, uh, considering yeah. FBI and what you already you know what you mentioned about uh, your beliefs about that a previous agent wouldn't that in a way kind of be an interaction with the U.S. government yeah. or or is that uh, yeah. or is that not or can it not be officially be, be categorized as because one agent is supposed to be a representative but doesn't exactly would speak for the other parts of the government or how does that work? Yeah, I believe we've had contact ongoing uh, with um, with what I would call the uh, the white hats, uh, the white hats of the government uh, of the various governments of the world um, who have been having contact with positive alien entities. And we've also had uh, malevolent alien entities that have been having consistent contact with uh, what I would call, um, well, I would call them uh, the cabal, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 13 bloodlines, uh, the people who are working for our destruction. And they have regular contact uh, with the uh, malevolent alien entities as well. Uh, and so, and that's an ongoing process. It's happening all the time, all the time. And uh, there's no there's no monolithic representation uh, of alien visitors or of or of humanity either. So this is this is just something that's always going on. And uh, yeah, I do believe that uh, we had some massive contact. Uh, there's um, there's some massive contact that occurred. Right around you know 1947, some people say it was <laughs> it was with uh, President Eisenhower. Uh, um, I don't I don't know if I if I really believe that, uh, but I believe that it was um, parts of a globalist government 
which is not government at all. It's just a bunch of elites that did meet with uh, malevolent alien entities and did make the deal, what's called the deal, the deal where we get uh, uh, technology in exchange for bodies. And uh, that's, uh, that's a very unfortunate thing that we don't have direct evidence of, but we see the results of it. We see the results of it all the time because the numbers of people we have had missing every year since 1947 is not explainable. It's not explainable in any other, any other way because the numbers are, are just too, too high. Um, uh, if you look through uh, FBI criminal statistics, uh, in this country, in the United States, we have an average of about 34, 35,000 people in the United States on a regular basis every year that disappear. Disappear, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying people that uh, run away from home or, um, or are suspected in foul play, like possible murders. No, we're talking people that just, they're gone. They just disappear. The numbers are just too high, too high to, um, to be explained in any, in any physical, like purely physical sense. So that's, uh, that's one of the things that we need to really look at to understand that the deal that was made was a real thing. It, it really was. And if you want to discuss the the varieties of, of aliens that exist like species I think I have another um, and I explained this in my book the extra dimensionals I really believe that there's only two types of alien visitors that matter and that is the benevolent ones that are working with us to try to make things better with us uh, and the ones that are the malevolent ones the ones that are working against us, working for our destruction. Uh, those are the only two types of matter because, because alien visitors are extra dimensional. I believe, and I show this in my, in my book, that they can basically change species like we change clothing. Just, you know, we can have a gray that uh, decides to just change into a Nordic. And so they do. Uh, as a matter of fact, we saw this in the, in the uh, case, in Travis Walton's case uh, in 1975 in Sit Graves, Arizona, when they took him, uh, when they took him aboard this uh, ship, uh, supposedly we have, he had uh, three greys that attacked him. They were these little greys that attacked him and tried to push him down on this table. And he just started swinging at them and they ran away. Well, then... He had, uh, we had three Nordics that then came back later to him. And they were very large, tall, very powerful looking beings. And they acted just like the three greys and brought him back to the same table where the greys tried to put him down. And they successfully put him down this time. And I, when I saw that scene happening, when I saw that, uh, it just it just connected for me that these were the same three greys that simply changed their clothing, so to speak, to become three Nordics and then to do what they had to do uh, successfully. So, yeah, that's I don't really believe that um, species matters with alien visitors because they're not physical like we are. So, uh, John, it's probably a, a huge stretch to, to, I guess, I, I don't want it to be leading this way, but let's say talking about these uh, malevolent uh, beings, do you think there's any connection to what's going on right now on the planet and, and maybe this being part of their work? I mean, because I know 
we can be, we all have a sense of bias, you know, and, uh, you know, if we're, for example, you know, and, and I don't mean this in a, in a negative way, but it doesn't matter, even if you're uh, religious in a certain way, then, you, of course, you have the religious filter. Um, us here in ufology, if we're, you know, all about aliens, and, of course, everything has a UFO filter and alien-related and so on. And so sometimes it's difficult to be this neutral party to really just look at things. But based on what you know, based on the research you've done, um, would you say that this would be uh, more of the doings of another alien race or is this actually just you know our human government going nuts you know the um the interesting thing is that um i spoke to jack valet once and he he told me very succinctly that uh disclosure from the government from any government is not really possible because they don't really have the inside track on anything, anything at all. They are simply following orders. That's what governments always do, and that's what they always will do. And the knowledge about what's really going on, it only exists at the very top of the pyramid, the very top of the pyramid. And the governments aren't there. They are actually just taking orders from other places. And so I don't really, so when we see, for instance, uh, when we see government uh, UFO, authentic, true UFOs, and I learned this through painful experience, when you see a real UFO showing up over a military base uh, or somewhere uh, in the United States, and then you see these uh, these government helicopters uh, coming in after them, uh, and then you have government people uh, coming and asking you questions and debriefing you about the UFOs, it's... It's not because they they are in with the UFOs. It's not because they know anything about the UFOs. Uh, very often, uh, they are just trying to find out what's happening. Also, uh, they are, and sometimes they're told to do certain things, like we saw at Rendlesham in 1980, uh, where you saw these. We saw this uh, invasion of a military base, an American military base, uh, with. Uh, with uh, on British soil that was basically it was uh, invaded by these many uh, many UFOs of various sizes that came in uh, and terrorized the soldiers basically uh, but also came in and shut down some nuclear facilities some nuclear missiles that were being uh, used for something apparently and they just came in and they went throughout the base, and uh, they were eventually they they finished whatever they were doing, and they left. And then we saw these we saw the government people coming in and uh, threatening all the soldiers into into silence and to never talk about this and confiscating the uh, the recordings that these people made of the incident and doing all this this cover up activity uh, from very high levels of the government. And it can be very easy to be tempted to believe, well, governments, they're in with the UFOs, and that's why they're working so hard to cover this up and to get everybody to stay quiet. Uh, and very often, uh, that's not the case. The, the reason they, they work so hard to cover this stuff up, uh, because this happened across two nations. It was the United States and England, and yet they were able to mobilize the uh, the guys to come in and shut everybody up so quickly. It was amazing. And the reason is because they truly don't know what happened. They truly don't have control over it. And they don't want us to know the terrible, terrible truth that they're just not in control of this. And they really don't have a good grasp on what is happening. And that's the reason they want silence over this situation and they don't want anyone to talk about it. That was the reason why. And that's the reason why, especially, we need to be suspicious of a time like now when we suddenly see governments and the media coming together and telling us that these, uh, these TikTok vehicles, these, uh, go fast vehicles, these uh, these things 
these little metallic tic tac things that we're seeing all over the place that uh, now we're finally, finally allowed to think that these are authentic, real UFOs. And we need to really take a step back from that because this is a change. Uh, this is a huge change that we see happening right now uh, for some reason uh, in the last year or two. Um, when whenever the New York Times started this, I think they started it in in 2017, actually, uh, when they declared that these uh, these uh, that there was an A tip organization in the uh, in the government that was uh, monitoring these UFOs, and that uh, now these UFOs were appearing uh, on the on the uh, on the Atlantic on the Atlantic in in front of the Nimitz in front of the Nimitz destroyer. And they had videos of it. Now they're showing the videos, all this stuff. This, we're being led to this right now. And it's for a very good reason that we need to really uh, examine. And that's why, because we're going into this period, and they're trying to, again, reiterate to us that, yeah, these UFOs, they're just physical. They're physical, and they're real, and they're extraterrestrial. And now you guys need to be really scared of this. And so we need to look at that very, very carefully and see um, and learn the reality uh, behind UFOs and alien visitors really fast. So basically, if they to be very suspicious of, of the sudden before they would have to interrogate human beings to find out, hey, what in the world happened? And now they're like, hey, uh, we, we know what's up. We've been following this all along. Is that basically... <laughs> The gist of it, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what they're trying right. to tell us uh, now. Well, because we're, there's recently. there's yeah, there's a bit of a hope though on our end too. You know, they've been into this for a while. They're like, wow, government's finally listening. You know, and and so and it's almost like, yeah, I guess that's a perfect example of too too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll say. I'll say. And so that's for so, sure. so basically. Uh, what I meant, to, what I wanted to get into specifically when I was asking about uh, malevolent intent is regarding, let's say, about COVID itself and all these other things that are happening. Like, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it just, you know, today. I know it's not UFO related, but we're talking about malevolent beings contacting higher ups, right? And mm -hmm. so if whatever is happening on top is trickling down to the bottom, that's why I'm, you know, asking about this to draw this co connection. Um, you know, just in France, people can't get food, you know, if they don't have passport, you know, vaccine passport. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're building camps in Australia and I'm looking around like, what in the world is going on? You know, and, but this is exactly exactly the thing that conspiracy theorists were just you know being shunned for 20 years ago because this actually is literally like reality coming true i mean the what the the darkest deepest parts of the web are now front frontline news and so mm -hmm. really makes you wonder who these conspiracy conspiracy theorists were to begin with you know because to an extent, mm -hmm. and, and I believe that, you know, we create our own reality, but if this small group is truly supposed to be a small group, you know, and everyone else didn't believe it, then I doubt that it would be the, the masses that created this. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. To, because Absolutely. if they weren't aware of it, they didn't believe this conspiracy theory, you know, they wouldn't be putting that energy behind to then off the sudden camps start being built and people being rejected <laughs> to get in stores. And so it makes mm -hmm. you wonder who the smaller group of quote unquote conspiracy theories really was or conspiracy exactly. theorists really was and so can you yes. maybe speak to that a little bit if not i understand it we'll move on to different subjects no no i'm so glad you mentioned that because we right now because this connects perfectly to what i just alluded to and here's how we are we are right now the global population we are under attack we have a war being fought against us. It is a war to subjugate us, to put us into camps, to basically eliminate us, to eliminate us. And this war is being fought against us by the very, very rich and very super powerful, the controllers uh, of the, uh, the ruling class of society that has decided that they need to reduce our numbers because there's too many of us. And so they are fighting a war 
to destroy us. And that is happening right now. And that's why there are camps being built uh, in Australia and uh, in many other places as well. And we are being uh, turned away uh, from uh, getting our, our, our food at supermarkets and many other things. And that is going to get much, much worse. That is because of this war that is being fought against us. And what I am here to tell you is that if we, and we are right now, we're starting to fight back. We're starting to fight back in this war. And it's, you know, it's happening, it's happening in France, it's happening in uh, Australia, it's happening uh, here in the United States as well. And we're starting to fight for our freedom. And what I am here to tell your audience is that if this war that they are fighting against us, uh, if it falls apart, if this whole, uh, this whole, uh, Plandemic, let me say, if I can say that word, uh, if this whole pandemic uh, that's been planned for many, many years, uh, if it falls apart and the elites, uh, the cabal loses this whole, uh, this whole fight, this battle to uh, subjugate us, then here's what I'm here to tell you. They are going to roll right into their next plan. Their next plan to subjugate us, which is even better than the pandemic, it is going to be what I refer to as fake alien invasion. It is something that was predicted by the great futurist, um, the great futurist who was in uh, World War II, was the head of NASA, uh, Werner von Braun, and he talked about the Western world and several fake wars that we would uh, be embark on to, uh, to keep the Western world occupied and subjugated. And the final great war, he said, would be fake alien invasion. And the only, and the only thing fake about it, because uh, the destruction is going to be real. Uh, the destruction is going to be real. It's going to be the devastation of our cities. Uh, the only thing fake about it is that we're never going to get to see the alien visitors because they're not real. <laughs> That's the only thing. We're never going to get to actually see them. But the members of the elite, uh, the, uh, the members of the cabal, the same people who are pushing, pushing the pandemic right now, they're going to say, they're going to be stepping forward and saying, hey, we can, we can save you guys. Uh, we we're in contact with the alien overlords and, they said that you should put me in charge and that uh, everything will be okay. Uh, if, and I'll be in charge of District 1, the United States, and uh, I'll be able to, you know, so that everything will be okay. And uh, that is going to be a major part of faked alien invasion. And it's going to be devastating. And it's the one thing, the one thing that they believe will unite humanity under them. And... Uh, if you really look at the plan on paper, it looks pretty solid. It looks uh, very solid, and that is why they will use it. They will use it, and they expect to have great success with it. And so that is why I'm trying to sound the alarm and warn people and tell people uh, to please read my book, read the Extra Dimensional, so you can see the lies that they are trying to perpetrate right now, because this whole thing, uh, this whole thing about the Tic Tacs that's going on, uh, that is part of faked alien invasion uh, and getting the celebrities and the politicians to back up this, this Tic Tac stuff. That is all part of that because they have this plan on the back burner for the moment that the pandemic fails, that it fails, it falls apart. They're going to roll right into that. And that's what I'm here to warn people about. So in, in the FBI circles, is that a known thing that basically that there is this cabal, that there are these people um, and and that they are, uh, you know, doing all these things that they are? Or is it just something that occasionally an FBI agent would come across and then his higher up would say, do not research this or do not look into this? I mean, can you maybe speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I'd say it's it's uh, pretty um, it's 
pretty uh, both well known um, within cer with certain FBI agents, and also we're yeah, of course we're told all the time by superiors in the FBI to to not look into this stuff, to not uh, not show interest in it, and stop investigating it as well. Um, that's told to us all the time. I mean, I'm a person who uh, picked up the mantle for another FBI agent. Oh, shoot who was before my time, uh, who, uh, he recently passed away. Uh, he was in charge of, uh, Los Angeles office of the FBI. And he was, um, I don't have his name right here. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's always, there's always a few of us around who, uh, will be looking into these alternative things and, and, uh, spreading this alternative information. Uh, because right now, we realize we in, in the FBI and and in other places in the government, we realize that basically at this point, all of our mainstream information is completely one hundred percent false. It's completely false. We cannot. We are now at a point in our society. It's the same point where uh, people in the Soviet Union were in nineteen eighty nine, uh, where they cannot trust any shred of information from official sources whatsoever. And we're actually we're actually at a point where the only information we can trust is from citizen journalists. Citizen journalists on the ground in these places where things are happening uh, who are reporting to us on a personal level based on their personal integrity. That's it, that's the only people, that's the only news that we can basically trust at this point. Uh, that's where we are and it's, an, it's crazy to think that that that's where we really are at this point but we are and um we need to keep that in mind because uh in the soviet union in 1990 i believe uh, all the citizens basically uh just turned off pravda news they turned off pravda news at 6 p.m every night across three time zones they turn off uh, pravda news and they would go out and walk their dogs they would go out and walk their dogs and talk to each other and get news from each other, from each other. And, and that would be the only way they would transfer information uh, because walking your dog was a period in the dog park was actually a time when the, when the KGB wouldn't surveil you or, or punish you for congregating because you were doing an ordinary activity. So that became something universal throughout the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union couldn't give away uh, Pravda newspapers or Pravda news at six uh, on the on their television. Nobody watched it. At the end, uh, at the end when it was just before the fall, they or only government officials looked at Pravda news. That's it, and that's where we are right now uh, with the United States, where basically everybody's just shutting off mainstream sources and corporate sources of news. On both sides, it doesn't matter which side, uh, because all we can trust is whatever's from our fellow citizens at this point. That's a good point you're making, because I remember uh, when the riots were happening during the summer and uh, all this destruction and all of that, I just, uh, my wife and I, we were basically looking for literally people with cell phones that would just have their battery packs on and just walk around. I'm like, okay, at this time, at this point, this is where I'm at, and this is what you're seeing right now. There was no filling in information. There was no, oh, no, we have exclusive information of what is going on here. They just literally showed it for what it was, you know, and right. that's who we were searching. I mean, we found at least five six different great journalists that are just like this is i'm here this is what's happening i have no idea exactly what's happening but all i can do is try to give you a stream out in the moment as it's going on and so it really changed the way we looked at news uh, i mean we had given up on it a long time ago anyway you know but um uh, and then of course you have you know, it's not it's no accident. Uh, you might have seen it or heard of him, uh, Tim Pool. You know, he started out yeah. that way, simply just reporting on the ground. Why? Because you just can't absolutely, t you know, take anything, you know, out of the mouth from the mainstream media. So, um, yes. and so, which actually then, you know, brings me back around to the, the original question. Then, 
when it's time to to talk more in detail about UFOs, when it's time to, you know, give out more information where everybody would just be basically hanging on to every bit that they say, uh, that would be very interesting then what information they would be coming out with, which then based on the pave, you know, based on the past, there's no other reason to believe that it's just going to be another propaganda move. And so that's unfortunate, you know, especially to, to hope that they would be forthcoming. I mean, especially this should have been clear to everyone based on this past uh, report that they did, you know, it was preliminary. I'm hoping that there's more coming out. Um, uh, but it was very, it's, it was a joke, really. You know, the only thing that I've mentioned on the show here and always will say it is that they didn't poo-poo it. You know, they were just like, oh, we just need more money and more more ways to collect data differently. And I was like, okay, well, at least you didn't say there were just, you know, swamp gas or balloons, you know. And yeah. so... Um, yeah, and that's yeah. because it was a placeholder. There right. Were, um, because, of, because of the ongoing uh, operations going on now with the pandemic... Uh, they decided to just put a pin in it and just, we'll come back to this later. And they will. If the pandemic comes apart and stops or fails, uh, they are going to come back to it with a vengeance. And then you're going to be seeing a lot of news, a lot of new congressional reports, reports to the NDI, uh, uh, the uh, National Information uh, Director, whatever it's called, Intelligence Director, and uh, you're going to be seeing crazy amounts of activity. And there's going to be more congressmen that are going to jump on the bandwagon and senators and politicians and celebrities that are going to jump on that bandwagon. And the operation will just go to the moon, as they say. It will go crazy at that time. I mean, talking about the waters being mudded, uh, mudded now, you know, with, with different points of views, uh, the nuts and bolts people, the experiences, the abductees, the, you know, uh, spiritual aspects, and people choose to look at it more in that way and doing their own thing in that. You know, I mean, we have camps all over the place. It's, you know, the UFO community. It's not really a community. It's like, a, you know... Um, the collection of cells that begrudging, begrudgingly kind of get together if they have to on occasion, uh, and if not, then they don't at all, you know. And so, um, talking about, you know, I mean, look at, for example, how celebrities can muddy the waters now, you know, where just they come out, they're like, oh, well, I have a platform, let me express my mindset about whatever, you know, I. You know, may you know, I play pretend for for a living, so I'm going to give you my political point of view as if this is the word of God, you know. And so now, yeah. if they start messing with the UFO community and then start, you know, coming out with all their BS in that way, that that would really truly be a mess, I would think. Oh, it, it will be, and that's exactly what's going to happen, uh, because you're going to have so many more uh, celebrities get involved in this, and you're going to have them uh, come up with. Uh, phony baloney stories you're going to have more videos of the uh, tic tacs uh the go fast vehicles uh these things are and these things are showing up all over the world as a matter of fact and uh they're they're basically nothing more than uh than uh really uh american super weapons they're basically just super weapons and right now what's going on is we have um uh, the uh, white hats in our government and the black hats trying to take possession of these Tic Tacs for their own purposes. And that's a struggle that's that's just continuing to go on uh, because the black hats want to use these Tic Tacs for their fake alien invasion. Uh, and But the destruction is going to be real. So that's, that's the problem that we're in right now uh, as this operation will get bigger and bigger and bigger and more people will want to jump in on the winning side and that's what you're talking about there with the celebrities that will that will come into this and the uh, and the senators and the congressmen and all the different politicians that will come into this and will uh, be rooting for the winning side and uh, there'll be uh, it's going to be it's going to be a huge mess when it finally does happen and uh, you'd get you get more truth from an experiencer who you show these videos, these Tic Tac videos to, and tell them, do you think that's real? <laughs> do you think that's real? And that's, and that's when you're going to get the real answer on, uh, on what's going on 
with these uh, with these tic tacs and these vehicles that the government is suddenly saying are are potential evidence that we are not alone in the universe. Well, John, so uh, I don't want to put you on the spot. So we are about a one hour mark, and I, I do I did want to um, ask you more about your other other books. But if you would like to go into Q and A, we can do that instead as well. So um, just totally up to you. Just let me know. Yeah, Q and A. That's cool, man. Okay, let's do that. All right, good. Be awesome. All right. Well, I, so just to give um, everyone else a chance to get positioned and start submitting your questions, I want to ask you a question of, of my own. So then that way they can start um, uh, writing in. So um, just real quick for, for those watching uh, Telegram, if you would like to ask a question of John directly, uh, simply download Telegram, join the, the voice chat. If you are already in voice chat, like some of you are listening right now, make sure you raise your hand so that way I know you actually want to speak to him. Um, otherwise, I know you're just uh, basically listening. And uh, for those in chat, please make sure you put the three dots before your question uh, so that that way I know it's directed towards John as well. Because um, I've been noticing you guys have been very busy in chatting it up. And so I, I do not wish to kind of try to go through it, figure out what's a question and what's a comment. So John, let's, uh, let's start out with Telegram. We have uh, uh, Nathan who raised his hand. So Nathan, you are unmuted. Uh, on my end, unmute yourself on yours and uh, ask John a question. Nathan, can you hear me? Okay, well, I'm going to mute him back and then we'll see. He'll he'll probably raise his hand again when, when he's ready. So let me see here. There's... Okay, Hazel um, is asking... A, whether or not you had your own experiences, which you got into, but she did mention she was a bit late. So I'm not going to ask you to repeat that again. But Hazel, if you just go back, um, maybe halfway mark or so, uh, or first quarter, you'll be able to hear John uh, talking about a story. Uh, Bradley, uh, Bradley's asking, John, your two cents on the on the pandemic, please. I mean, is there anything else more that you would like to add or just leave it at what you already discussed? Yeah, I just want to, my two cents are that uh, the pandemic has been, it's been planned uh, since, since 2010 when an individual named Klaus uh, Schwab wrote a book uh, called uh, COVID, COVID-19, The Great Reset. And in that book, he wrote the entire blueprint to use a virus and a, a sickness and the subsequent vaccines to attack a society and to accomplish depopulation. And if you don't believe me, look it up. Look it up. Find the book. It's available on Amazon. And it is crazy. It is crazy. And you got to read it because it's hard to believe because these people are not hiding their stuff. The stuff is not secret. It's in the open, and you just have to go look at it. Great. Thank you, John. The next question is uh, from the 5D Raver, uh, asking, where do we get the information about the cameras mounted on the munitions of the Battle of Los Angeles? First time mm -hmm. I heard about this. Yeah. Uh, that was something that I just got through painstaking research uh, through just going through dusty old documents uh, and just relentlessly uh, finding old documents and uh, journals as well. Uh, some of my some of my uh, research has been accomplished uh, at the uh, New York City Public Library on microfiche. <laughs> if you, I d doubt you guys know what that is, but <laughs> there's this there's this old stuff called microfiche where they take ancient documents and reduce it to this, this film that is very small. And you can actually go to a machine and actually expand the documents and be able to see them uh, and, uh, and read them. And there can be documents that are like 100 years old, 100 years old, and they're all there. And so you have to go to some pretty extreme lengths to find some of this research. But I believe you can also find it... Uh, 
find it on the net if you if you know where to look uh, to find this stuff. But you have to go beneath the surface. You have to go beneath the surface to actual uh, personal uh, personal writings of people who were there at the time. That's the way you find hidden history. Uh, you have to find the journals. You have to go to the journals. You have to find the, the personal writings and notes of people who were present at that time. That's uh, something that I learned from uh, Dinesh D'Souza and also uh, from um, uh, the guy who does the Civil War documentaries, Ken, uh, I forget his name, but uh, he does that as well. And uh, that's a very important way to accomplish your research. So John, the next question is from Heidi. I don't know exactly what this means. Maybe you might have said something about this that I can't recall, but the question is basically, where can people get a thousand pieces? A thousand pieces, uh, you can get it on, um, let me see, I got my, uh, my assistant is in the uh, chat, I believe, uh, but it is available, oh, Vimeo, it's available on Vimeo. And you can just go there and log in, uh, and you can use the uh, coupon code D'Souza Gift, uh, D'Souza Gift for like twenty percent off. And uh, and the uh, thousand pieces is a documentary that I would that I did uh, showing showing the uh, intelligence agencies of the United States uh, how bad they are and some of the terrible things they've done to American society over the years. And that's the reason why uh, JFK said, I will take the CIA and break it into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the wings, to the winds. And uh, that's where the uh, title of the documentary comes from. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very interesting, very good documentary. I would urge people to see. Uh, at Vimeo, Vimeo, that's it. Great, thank you. Uh the other question from Hazel is, how can we overturn what is happening to us via the pl pandemic? Oh, you have to resist. You have to stop complying. You have to stop going along with what is being done to us by politicians uh, at this time. Uh, that's the only way to stop it, uh, because we are basically at uh, 1934 Germany. And we are the Jews in this case, and we are being uh, herded towards these towards camps, uh, towards these terrible results. Uh, people are being imprisoned in their own homes uh, with helicopters <laughs> flying overhead. Uh, yeah, we are we're in a very bad situation, and we need to just stop complying. Uh, businesses have to stop complying. Uh, citizens uh, everyone has to stop complying and we must resist this uh this globalist takeover of our society it's the only way that's what we need to do great thank you for that so let me try uh nathan again uh, nathan you're unmuted on my end well yes can you hear me this time yep there you are go ahead ask your nathan, question please. there you are uh, well, yes, I just wanted to know if you might have any insider knowledge or just uh, from your own you know, process of deduction. Uh, do you know where, where do we stand on this pandemic? Are we is it is it is there is there evil plan succeeding or, or are we winning? Is it failing? Where do you where do you see we stand right at this moment? OK, thank you for well, that. Nathan. It's well, Nathan, it's, it's hard to tell because every bit of information that we get from them from uh, these from these governments and these organizations that are set up uh, that are set up uh, against our interests uh, is is false uh, so for, so for instance you'll get we'll get statistics that people will just accept uh, they'll tell us oh you know 70 uh, percent uh, uh, of your state is uh, already vaccinated and then they'll tell us, and then they'll tell us. So you might as well stop resisting and just give in. Uh, and uh, then you'll you'll go to an independent source and find out that they lied. That it's not even close to seventy percent. It's uh, it's somewhere it's somewhere much much lower. 
and that people are succeeding in, in resisting in resisting this stuff. But then you know you've got all these uh, all these companies that are actually firing people and and dismissing them for not uh, complying not complying with their evil plans. And um, you know we have to there is no way basically at this point. I mean we know that we're resisting. We know that we're fighting for for freedom and we're trying to resist this violation of our human rights. This is beyond the constitution. This is just violations of our human rights as human beings. It's violations of Nuremberg, Nuremberg, where no one, no one should ever be allowed to force you to take a substance into your blood. That's that's insane. It's a violation of the Constitution, it's a violation of human rights, it's a violation of every every precept of law and order that we have come to know at, during our lives. So, yeah, we um, there is no way to know who is winning in this in this uh, battle right now, but we must keep fighting, we must keep resisting, and we must keep on gathering knowledge, gathering knowledge and giving each other knowledge as much as we can. And uh, so with that vein, uh, Nathan, I also wanted to tell you, as my, I'm being told here, that uh, I have a 25% discount for my book, The Extra Dimensionals, where I'm trying to let you know about the next crisis that's going to be created uh, against us. And uh, you're, and you should oh you can go to my website johntamabooks.com johntamabooks.com and you can get a twenty five percent discount using code UFO hub UFO hub uh, one word and get twenty five percent off my book the extra dimensionals so I'm supposed to let you know that Nathan as well John thank you for that. Yeah, it, uh, as always, all the links and that the guest shares with me is, are in the description below. And I always urge you to go and check it out because there's always more that either we don't get to uh, to be talked about. And uh, do you, I'm sure you probably have a way to be contacted as well or no? Uh, if not, that's okay. I just don't want to give that information out and it not being true. Yes, no, I, I can always be contacted through my website, John Tamil Books. JohnTamaBooks.com. JohnTamaBooks.com. Yeah, because uh, right yes. now I believe uh, there's a YouTube channel, your website, Facebook. So all of these right. watching, interested in seeing what uh, what else John has to offer, please check it out. And uh, John, thank you again. I appreciate that for the discount. So take advantage of that using UFO Hub. <laughs> uh, so I have the next question is uh, from Polly. Uh, Polly, you are unmuted on my end, and go ahead and ask your question. Sure. So you talked about how uh, people are losing trust in the media and it's like the Soviet Union. Uh, I think I agree with that. I have a question. So uh, every once in a while, you'll hear something where basically all the news, nighttime news, maybe not local news, will just coordinate and just start saying something like a phrase like the new normal or some. It seems like right. it's prepackaged. Every station, oh, yeah. every commercial just starts doing it and repeat it over and over. And I ask normal people, I'm like, do you think it's weird that every, and then you hear it on the street, these, and it, I, I'm wondering, do you know, are these put together by think tanks like months in ahead and they plan it out and then they just dish it up and that's, and everybody goes along with it. And then another question related to that is, People, I don't, I don't live in Washington D.C. or know a lot of people there, but I'm wondering, people at work, maybe in the federal government, that they want to consume news for themselves, and maybe they're the position where they know it's kind of scripted. Do you know what they watch? Do they read the Economist? Do they pay for the news? Do they just not watch it, or do they watch the news like CNN and that everyone else watches and believe it? Or do they? So, I'm looking for maybe a, a source of news that people that know things would watch for them to learn and also kind of how this all coordinated. It just, it's very interesting to me. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Polly. Cool, Polly. I would say, let me uh, answer the first, uh, second question first. All the people throughout Washington, D.C. 
because I have worked there in the past. Uh, all the, uh, especially in leadership roles uh, throughout Washington, D.C., they all, I'm sorry to say, they all read the New York Times. They all go to the New York Times for their information and for ultimately for what they believe. And they all watch, uh, pretty much they all watch CNN as well. Uh, that's just the way it is. That's what they have playing in the background when they're doing their doing their work or their assignments or whatever uh, to find out up to the minute news at that point. Uh, and that's a very that's a very sad thing because um, New York Times and CNN have proven themselves to be completely fake so many times, so many times. Um, it's just ridiculous to try to keep count of how many times they've lost defamation suits, how many times they've been sued for wrong information, damaging information, intentionally slanderous information. Uh, you can't even keep count of that. It's it's just mind-boggling. And going, Paulie, back to your first question, uh, what I wanted to tell you was that um, there is, and this is not, well, I guess it is kind of a secret, but it's an open secret. Uh, there is a system of fax machines, if you guys even remember what those are. Uh, there's a system of fax machines that are delivered into every major newsroom and news outlet across the country. And that fax machine, I, I think, actually, I think it's in the, in the, usually it's in the home of the editor, like the top editor, producer of the news, whatever. And he have that fax machine. And it is a fax machine that is distributed from an organization known as the uh, the uh, board of directors of the New York Times and the uh, and the the New York Times and they basically put out talking points and scripts to on that fax machine to every major news office director basically uh, across the country, usually by 3 a.m., by 3 a.m. of the previous day uh, for the next for the next news cycle, and that's where they basically and it's I think it's technically it's from the chairman of the New York Times, and he's that or that organization is who creates these scripts these talking points, these new phrases that everyone has to use. And that's the reason you see everyone using the same things and all that. So that's where that comes from. Thanks for that, John. Uh, Christine, Ann, I'm going to get to you in one quick second. Please hold tight. I want to read a, uh, a question from comments. Um, Heidi's asking, have you, have you heard any rumors with regard 23rd September and fake alien blue beam invasion. Uh, yes, it's floating, pardon the pun about. <laughs> I get it. Okay, floating. That's a, uh, yeah, I, about the 23rd of September. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I usually, I try never to believe in dates and date setting uh, right off the bat. That's uh, that's always a bad way to go. However, um, in events uh, that are going on, uh, you are it is it is correct that blue beam technology has been used against us. I believe it was used at 9/11, uh, and blue beam technology actually includes uh, includes holograms with a higher technology to them. Holograms that actually have light. Uh, they have sound and limited physicality to them, which is difficult to understand. But that's that's what they have. It is it's um it's extraordinary technology, and it's also the technology that I believe they will they will again be using um, uh, when uh, fake alien invasion is happening and other incidences as well that they are planning as well. 
Thank you for that, John. So I was, uh, somebody brought it up to my attention. I said three dots. I'm sorry, I meant to say three stars before your question, if you're leaving uh, a question in the comments. So uh, let me go over to Christine Ann. Christine, you are unmuted on my end. Unmute yourself on yours and uh, go ahead and ask your question. Christine, are you there? You might have to tap the button to unmute. Oh, there we go. Can there you, you go. hear me now? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, I am an experiencer myself. Um, I have been kind of perplexed on my experience because it was in my home and I never saw a craft. Um, and I've talked to a few professionals about it and one in particular said you know i don't think it was extraterrestrial like we believe it's extraterrestrial and now hearing what you're saying today it makes sense to me that it was interdimensional um i was basically uh drilled in the back of my neck in my own home in one incident this happens in 2017 and then a second incident where I was, um, I had three beeps in my ear, my left ear, three beeps, totally paralyzed and zapped. I guess you could call it, it was like electrical zap from the top of my head, down my spine, forcefully arching my back, back hard three times after the three beeps. Um, and then just done, left. Um, and I was not into extraterrestrials. I was not, I was, you know, I was on my laptop answering emails for heaven's sakes, work emails. I wasn't even, I, I just wasn't even into extraterrestrials. Um, and I've been trying to seek answers. And it seems as though what you're saying today is really hitting home to me. It really feels like this is what it really is. It wasn't a physical extra, extraterrestrial and a spaceship coming down because mind you, these experiences were during the day with the sun out between 5.30 and 6 o'clock in the evening. July, you know, hot summer day when people are out. I live behind my backyard, backs up to a huge dog park. And I've always wondered, how did this happen? And none of my neighbors knew. Does this sound like an interdimensional type of experience to you? Um, exactly, it does. It absolutely does. And um, in my book, I have um, I have an experience from a young lady very similar to yours. Her name was Martha X. That's how I identify her. And she went through a lot of those uh, physical experiences like what you just described. And she had no answer for how these could be fully physical and how the alien visitors could have been fully physical because it didn't make sense with what she went through. She felt as if she had been, she was converted into another realm, another realm, another uh, uh, another existence of our, of existence, basically. They, uh, another sort of level of existence. And that's where she had a lot of these examinations and these devices uh, put on her and that she went through this experience. Uh, you know, Jacques Vallée and others have said that these experiences are, the reason that they're so confusing to us is because they exist on a spectrum with spiritual realities. So that physical is over here, spiritual is over here, and then the experience that you went through, the abduction experience that you went through, is existing on that spectrum going towards the spiritual end of the spectrum. And so that's the reason why we find these things so bewildering because we are we believe that we're just physical beings and we're not we're also we're also spiritual beings but we are taught that we can only understand these experiences through the physical lens through that physical filter and that's what's completely wrong. That's what screws this whole thing up completely. And that's the reason why we need to understand the extra dimensional truth 
of these experiences and of these beings as well. Because if we go, because if we go along with the uh, with the deceit that the the alien visitors and these experiences are purely physical, then that's going to lead us to a lot of other deceptions that they have in store for us. That uh, that we need to be, we need to back up from that, and we need to learn the reality behind these experiences and these beings, so that we won't fall for their nonsense they have planned for us in the future. Rick, Christine, thanks very much for your question. Um, John, I don't know if this would make sense to you, but Sheldon uh, Carell is ask, basically saying, ask about Anjali. Do you know what that is? How do you A A N? Uh, it's A-N-J-A-L-I. Was he trying to say angelic? I don't. I don't know. I don't. It's just to ask about if if you don't know, I perfectly understand because I'm not too familiar with that reference either. Maybe um, Sheldon, if you can maybe expound a little bit more on that, then we can um, we can get get back to your question. So, um, John, what about? Um, let me see. Maybe another question or two, or would that be okay? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Do okay. It. I get a couple more questions and then we can we can conclude with that unless you have uh, more things that you would uh, like to share and I'd love to talk to you about it. Yeah, I've always got things. Okay. Right um, now. Right, right. I'm sorry. I'm just looking through here. Uh, so Hazel is asking, uh, do you think? Uh, it says, do you oh. think that chat rooms and messages such as this are being monitored by three-letter people? This was a question from Hazel. Yeah, absolutely they are. Uh, and um, if only by uh, web crawlers and web bots. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, the great uh, Cliff High, who is the brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, genius, really, who uh, created the web bot technology. And I believe he, in the 90s, he basically uh, created this web crawler technology that uh, he then um, he then sold to private contractors. Uh, and um, it's basically the, uh, it's based on the theory that uh, people know what is going to be happening in the future and they express what is going to happen in the future through their conversations, through chat rooms, through blogs, through websites, when in their ordinary conversation. And so these web crawling web bots, they crawl through all of this and they gather data, they collect it, they bring it back. And then uh, these people who are collecting the data supposedly can tell what is gonna happen in the future because we are all supposedly naturally clairvoyant. We all, through our subconscious, through our subconscious, we are naturally clairvoyant. And when we kind of express these these random conversations, casual conversations, we actually give data about that is reflected in the future of humanity. So it's really interesting stuff. But um, that's, and so yes, I do believe they are monitoring, even if it's just data mining or collecting, data collection uh, for later exploitation. So yeah, they are definitely checking that stuff out. Okay. And then there's, uh, I guess, another um, Heather, Heather Michael, I guess she kind of expounded more on what Anjali is. It's basically Anjali is a lady that uh, says there's a secret alien base in the Mojave Desert, and she's been, she's been there and is going to take a team to return. So that's who Anjali is then. I was not familiar with that, and I don't know if you are. No, no, but I'd like to see her information when she comes back. I want to see where it's posted. That would be great. Okay. All right. Well, uh, John, thank you again. Thank you very much. I think it's been great. I hope uh, in the future I can have you back on again. I'd, I'd appreciate it if, if you agree. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, it's it's been great so far. And, and so everyone else watching, uh, please take advantage of all the links that um, John has provided, his uh, websites, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and of course, uh, you said on the, on the website, there's a 25% discount if they use the coupon code UFO Hub. 
Exactly. Yep. For my book, The Extra Dimension, and any other of my books as well. Absolutely. That would be good stuff. And uh, and also I have coming up October 2nd and 3rd, I have Disclosure Con, uh, Disclosure Con uh, with Doc Skinner at uh, DisclosureCon.com. Uh, it's at Pine Top, Arizona. It's a physical event. <laughs> it's a, it's a, and uh, it's going to be going on in Pine Top, Arizona. Uh, I'll have the uh, great Mike Barra there, you know, Laura Eisenhower, and many others. Uh, and uh, also then, uh, I'm also in November, November 6th to 7th, we're having, I'm having the Holistic Health and Spiritual Expo in Chicago at Schaumburg Convention Center. And that's coming up also in November. So that's my that's my plugs, my ruthless plugs for today. Well, good deal. Well, folks, I hope you do check it out. So I know we're doing this a bit backwards, but I uh, just wanted to then basically leave it up to you if there's anything you wanted to conclude with, any final thoughts, and then we'll leave it at this. I just want people to know that uh, we need to we need to learn the truth and the reality of alien visitors of UFOs. There's nothing more important because this is going to come up very shortly. And if we don't know the reality of what they really are, then we're going to believe the authorities when they say what they are and they come forward with all kinds of terrible presents for us. And we're going to be playing their stupid games and we're going to win stupid prizes. Hmm. And that's what we need to avoid. So that's the reason for my book, The Extra Dimensionals. That's the reason for all my presentations. And that's what I'm trying to uh, raise the alarm for people on. That's what I want people to know. Thank you, Adnan. Well, John, thank you very much. Everyone else watching, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, tune in again next Wednesday at 7 for Open Lines. And uh, until then, I hope you have a good evening, good night. John, good night again, and uh, we'll chat again. Awesome. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks, man.